Rainforests provide homes for a wide diversity of animals. Let's meet some biologists who will introduce us to a few of the fascinating animals in the tropical and temperate rainforests. And let's start with you, Susan, in the Caribbean National Forest. Here in our forest, we have several species in danger of extinction that live within the bounds of the forest. And we are very lucky today to meet one of the most rare animals and the most uh, in endangered species in the world, actually, between all the birds. Uh, Fernando Nunez is the supervisor of the Puerto Rican Parrot Recovery Program. They are leaders in the world in the work they do. First, tell me about the Puerto Rican Parrot. Yes, Susan, as you can see, the Puerto Rican parrot is largely, largely, largely green with red forehead and uh, white ring around their eyes. It measures about 12 inches long and it's one of the most endangered animals in the world and it's also the only uh, native parrot species remaining in the United States. Uh, it's estimated that it was abundant when Columbus discovered Puerto Rico. How many were there when they arrived, the Spaniards? Uh, it's estimated that maybe a million individuals surviving in Puerto Rico at, at the time. Really? But the population gradually declined, and, and by 1960s, there were only 70 birds, all confined to the Caribbean National Forest. And it continued declining until the 70s, when there were only about 13 birds in the wild. 13? Only 13 birds. Now what happened? I know that they happened to nest in a certain type of log. Is that the reason why they disappeared? Yes, they are secondary cavity nesters and they need uh, mature forests with uh, large cavity forming trees to nest. And uh, as human population increased in Puerto Rico, they used uh, uh, the, the, the woods for timber and uh, fuel wood and also for the, they needed the lands for agriculture so the habitat of the Puerto Rican faro was uh, gradually changed and only the remaining habitat was left was here in the Caribbean National Forest. They don't like to be around people either. They're very shy. I know when we've tried to take video of them, they usually hide as soon as they detect that you're there. And that's another of the factors that they tend to stay away from people. So they confine themselves into the Caribbean National Forest, which, which was the only remaining mature forest in Puerto Rico. So how many are there in the wild right now? And what are you doing to try and get those numbers up? Uh, there are um, about 30 individuals in the wild, and uh, something that we're doing with, in the 70s, the Fish and Wildlife Agency uh, Service, the agency I work for, together with the Forest Service, established a captive propagation program here in the Caribbean National Forest. And in 1993, also, we divided the captive flock and uh, to the aviary uh, managed by the Puerto Rico Department of Natural and Environmental Resources in another part of the island. It's important to keep them separated so in case something happened in one of the aviaries, they got the flux or buys elsewhere. All right, well, why don't we take a look at that aviary right now? Sure. Right here to my left, we have the pair bonding cage where we um, um, form pairs. And to form those pairs, we use birds of, of different genetic makeup to make sure that we can avoid inbreeding depression. During the non-breeding season, we used to, uh, the, the cage to hold birds and as a flight cage. So we are now inside the, the, the pair bonding cage. And as you can see, we have the production of this year inside this cage. Uh, we just finished the breeding season and we have birds. Uh, sometimes we uh, try to avoid mixing adult birds and young birds because aggression problems during the non-breeding season. So we we keep them here so they learn to fly and they, they learn some of the um, part of behavior that they need to use eventually. And later we move them to uh, bigger flight cages outside this, this uh, part of the, of the aviary. To our left you will see the breeding cages and this is where we keep the breeding pairs. And uh, you, we just finished the breeding season and that's why you can see that our PVC nets are empty. But during the breeding season, we try to stay away from this area, keep them, just feed the birds and leave them alone so they can do uh, their breeding activity. We have a kitchen where we prepare the food for the parrots. Uh, we have the monitor room, and the monitor room have two kind of monitors, one of them to, for the security and surveillance of the, of the aviary, and another for surveillance and, and taking uh, uh, observations on breeding pairs in the breeding cages. So all cages have cameras that we can uh, make observations on their breeding behavior and pair formation. 
In addition, we have a, a hospital for veterinary care and it includes an operation, operating room, incubators, and uh, all the equipment that we need to take care of sick or injured birds. And we have an incubator room for uh, eggs that, that they're abandoned or we need, or need some kind of emergency care that we remove them from the pairs and take them to the incubators for hatching. One very important aspect of the ecology of the Caribbean are hurricanes, and this is why we have this big room here to move the flock. The entire flock has to be moved if a hurricane kind of get close to Puerto Rico. So we have to do that very quickly to make sure that we protect the flock. As an example, back in 1989, Hurricane Hugo struck this part of the island, and we have all the, the captive flock here, and we didn't lose a single bird from the Hurricane Hugo. However, the wild population was reduced in half by that same hurricane. So how many birds do we have in captivity right now, Fernando? And are you releasing them into the wild? Yes, uh, we have uh, 182 birds in captivity, and we use the birds produced in captivity to reintroduce them into the wild. As you know, the wild population is critically endangered, so we supplement the wild population with released birds. Are they surviving? Yes, we're very pleased with our result, and 30 to 50% uh, of them survive. And that's pretty good for a recovery program. It's comparable to the wild population. Yes. Plus, one very interesting fact is we use nannies from the Dominican Republic, right? We bring other uh, parrots to help our moms be better moms. Yes, and also we use them when we need to test some experimental procedures to, to, that we cannot use the Puerto Rican parrots to do with. You teach them to fly and to survive in the wild too, which is pretty interesting. Do they actually learn those techniques? Yeah, we use techniques to um, uh, show them how to survive in the wild and uh, to avoid predators. All right, well, that's very interesting, Fernando. Thank you so much. These are very endangered birds, and you're very lucky to be able to see them up close and personal today. Back to you, Sandy.